CMOs are making a huge mistake. They're not leveraging the creators to their fullest potential. And in this video, I have a framework for all of you CMOs and VPs of marketing out there to help you maximize the results from the creator-driven campaigns. And creators, I have something for you as well. Big shout out to Sam Katz for an inspiration for this framework. Global advertising spend is forecasted to hit $750 billion in 2024, but influencer-driven spend is estimated at about $30 billion, seemingly a healthy number, but this is only 4% of that global advertising spend. And even then, the number is exaggerated because the term influencer includes Hollywood celebrities who do not always participate in the creator economy. This disparity in the numbers got me wondering, why are CMOs not seeing the benefit from working with the creators? The right creator can drive much higher engagement, a lot better conversion, higher quality leads, and after all, they're way better than the faceless ad campaign or using some sort of fashion models. This is when Sam made a great point. CMOs are not using the whole chicken. Traditional CMOs look at the creators as yet another lead generation tool, forgetting that they can do so much more. This is the full scope of projects a brand could execute with a creator to take the full advantage of their unique position and experience. Creators are great on camera and have the visual presence so you have your face of the campaign. They know their audience, so you have the best expert on this audience to develop the best strategy. They have the voice, so they can help you communicate the messaging you develop in a way that feels natural to their audience. Creators are the real people who can go out there and interact with those audiences. And they are multi-platform and can be in long form, short form, TV, photo, podcast, and other forms of audio and visual content. All of these experiences combined supersede any kind of expensive marketing campaign that you can create. And you don't need to spend $2 million on a study by McKinsey to prove that point. Just go make a few small bets, experiment with several different creators, my dear VP of marketing, the leader of the marketing team, and try out different approaches across this framework to see what really works well with the type of product or service that you're selling and the kind of creator you attract for the audience that you target. And as promised, I have something useful for the creators as well. Colin and Samir teach creators on the best practices for the brand deals. One of their primary suggestions is to develop a menu of options you can present to a potential brand partner. And this is the framework, essentially the potential menu of options you could offer. Sure, as a faceless channel, for example, you might have to skip some of these options, but for everyone else, you can literally grab these items, put them on the list and fill in next to them a more specific deliverable related to your niche. Fitness creator, your in-person experience could be a live workout hosted by you. Tech creator, you can translate all those complex tech specs into the things that the audience actually cares about. Once you have that list, doll it up, make it look like some sort of branded piece of content, a PDF that you can just send out to those brand partners as they reach out to you or you cold reach out to them. And all of a sudden, you look way more professional and the type of things that you offer align a lot better with the way the CMO or the VP of marketing would think about those challenges as they try to decide on what kind of marketing campaign to pursue. Then ideate and build from there. You don't have to stick to this particular format or to those specific items. As a creator, you are creative. You get a chance to really carve the path towards the best type of brand partnerships you want to establish based on the kind of things you offer. And one final bonus tip for the leaders in the marketing space and for the creators, the best brand partnerships are based on the match in the value the creator and the brand delivers to their audience. Viewers come to creators in pursuit of a specific value. They want to be educated, informed, or entertained. If the brand partnership does not augment or expand that value, both the brand and the creator risk leaving the audience frustrated. If in doubt, workshop together between the brand and the creator the answers to these questions and if your response matches you are likely in alignment and ready to deploy a fruitful creator-led campaign notice how i'm yet to talk about the views or subscribers because in reality those things don't impact the execution and the results of those marketing campaigns as much as that match between the value that the brand wants to deliver and the kind of value that the creator delivers through their content to that audience if you pick and qualify the right type of creator for your brand, you essentially can maximize the result and 
deliver a much better ROI, say with a creator with sub 1 million subscribers versus running the same amount of campaigns, spending double the money and doing it with Mr. Beast. It is funny how life works. I joined the FYI webinar essentially just with that thought in my head about like why are the CMOs not seeing the value from the creators? And I asked the question from the panel, Sammy was on the panel, he responded and his response just like sparked this idea. That was that catalyst that was missing for me to form the answer to that question, at least the hypothesis as of now. I'm very much looking forward to seeing more CMOs, VPs of marketing, other marketing leaders leveraging the creators. And if you're one of them, whether you're a creator or you're on the marketing side and you're trying to figure out how to best leverage the creators, reach out. I'm most happy to chat on these topics and there are plenty of other frameworks on the creator economy on this channel. Otherwise, I'll see you next Saturday. Peace.